Thank you for inviting the Federal Commission for Alcohol Related Issues uh, here in this beautiful city to present the new Swiss guidelines to low risk alcohol consumption. I am Vice President of the Federal Commission and I work as a clinician in the Italian part of Switzerland. So I speak Italian, German, French and a little bit English, sorry about that. And uh, uh, in my everyday work I I'm in daily relationship uh, with uh, alcohol uh, addicted people, so uh, with people who didn't uh, know or didn't care about our guidelines. That's uh, one point. <laughs> um, I am pleased to represent our commission on this occasion and to talk about our work on this topic which last, lasted over two years. In this sense, I'm going to present you later our guidelines and begin with telling you, above all, something about our process and reflections. Our goal was to check and update our Swiss guidelines in order to support an upcoming national prevention campaign. The guidelines had, of course, to be based on scientific evidence, especially in relation to health risks, and we didn't want to neglect, neglect the social consequences. We were also concerned about communication issues, and we aimed a good acceptance by the population. That means our guidelines have to be evidence-based, the messages have to be consistent with our prior guidelines, and they have to make sense and be of interest for everyone so that everyone should be able to choose for himself a low-risk consumption level. We consider that our guidelines have to be specific for our Swiss cultural context, focused on daily moderate consum consumption instead of binge drinking, which is high. They have to consider our real standard glasses. We have to differentiate gender, health state, age, pregnancy, use of medicines, driving, and so forth. We have also to consider daily consumption, weekly consumption, days without consumption. We came to the conclusion that we have to keep the single rule, two, three, four for men, one, two, three for women, and that we have to differentiate, to have different advices, taking the risk of some complexity and assuming a role of policy makers, because we became aware that our guidelines are necessarily going to be partly interpretations of the scientific evidence. Above all, the question where to set the risk lever, which has been discussed also this morning. <clears throat> this awareness was based on some scientific works which our colleagues at Addiction Switzerland have done for us. This is the first one. The first step was to look at what other countries are doing. In particular, we have chosen to follow up the guidelines developed by Australia, based on absolute risks, and Canada, based on relative risks, as we also have seen in the morning. The second step was this work about the health risk of alcohol consumption, international and in Switzerland, the results highlighted that we have to consider quantity, drinking patterns, and frequency, and we had the data about that. As a result of this process, we decided to develop an online tool where everyone could check his individual risk depending on gender, age, health state, family history about diseases. All this in relation to his alcohol consumption, quantity, frequency, and so forth. Here you see a simplified version of the underlying matrix we began to develop. In, uh, indeed, it was three, four times what you see here. Unfortunately, we failed. The task was too hard and complex, scientifically and technically. We hope other countries with enough funds and the wide epidemiological knowledge will be able to accomplish this task. We, we had to lower our ambitions. We went back to simpler guidelines and, the, and included them in the prevention campaign, which aims to bring, to bring the people to question their own alcohol consumption. 
slogan of the campaign is how much is too much. People are rich in various ways, classical campaign, giveaways, medias, and many local ac activities, with the goal that they think about a relationship with alcohol and visit the website of the campaign for more information. Here you see a page of the site where some informations are provided. The pages contain also our guidelines. Contents of the guidelines and many others can also be found in an animated quiz. And these are the guidelines. I'm going to show you the extended version, but we created also a short, simplified version. There are seven guidelines. We began stating the need to respect the choice of an alcohol-free lifestyle. Right after, follow the guidelines for healthy adults, young people, pregnant and nursing women, older people, people taking medication, and concerning driving at work and during exercise. In the next slides, you can read the single guidelines. You will notice that they keep a style which aims to encourage a personal reflection on the alcohol consumption. So this is the one for the respect for alcohol-free lifestyles, and in the second part, also something about the protective effects or not. Then healthy adults, we have chosen here also to uh, maintain the, the option two, maximum three, one, maximum two, that also in the in the direction to keep uh, a discussion about it. <clears throat> we are in the higher level of the low-risk European <laughs> with that. Then we have something also on the single occasion um, uh, for uh, risk drinking. We have uh, age 16 as uh, the legal limit in Switzerland. Not everywhere. In the Italian Switzerland it's 18, but that's a little bit complicated because we have always these differences in the, in the, in the, in the regions and in the cantons. <coughs> and here also it's more narrative. Pregnant and nursing women, the advice to abstain, and also more on the narrative, narrative side. <clears throat> I leave you a little time to, to read it. Older people with the explanations. People taking medication with advice to talk to your doctor. And finally, driving at work and during exercise. So these are the guidelines. We, we are not sure that, that's, that they are guidelines still, because uh, we embedded them in a, a more uh, widened uh, narrative uh, and in the prevention campaign. So we, we, we didn't go out with, uh, with the guidelines as, uh, as they are, uh, but in, uh, more in, in this sense. <coughs> 
what's next? Um, with the main goal that individuals and society think more critically about alcohol consumption, we think that it's important to provide evidence-based information, but also messages that can be accepted as signific significant ones. Messages that are consistent with everyday experiences. In this regard, it could be relevant to check and adapt some of the terms and concepts we use in our campaigns and media communications. In Switzerland, we have also the peculiar difficulty that we have to find the solutions in three different languages, German, French, and Italian. The terms and definitions of binge drinking, chronic alcohol use, and risk drinking are the main examples of the next, this next possible step. Whereas I think that a more precise definition of binge drinking concerning the considered period of time would be important for our research, researches and monitorings, as well as, as for our communications and campaigns. As an example, uh, we have uh, Rausch trinken, uh, Intoxicazione Alcoholica, uh, and Ivres uh, Punctuel, Kion, uh, 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 where uh, we, we have uh, different uh, meanings uh, and we talk about them uh, in, in the different languages and uh, uh, I think that's important uh, uh, in first step about uh, binge drinking, uh, heavy episodic drinking, do, uh, do have a, a clear definition and a clear communication. Thank you. Mm. 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 So, thank you very much. Some questions? Yes, please. So, the, the level or the, the cut point that you are talking about, the, the gram amounts, um, two to three drinks per day for men. So, the, how do you consider how that translates over a week? Is it the same as, um, what does it mean, 14 to 21 drinks per week? Is it explicit whether this is the same or equivalent? Or if you don't drink every day, is it a lower amount per week? Because we talked about this um, over the lunch and it is, on, from the science, it's, the, the science curves, they are just for an average uh, over a, a year translated into a week or uh, translated into a day, and it's not so clear <laughs> what, what, like, whether a daily limit is the same as the weekly limit, or you know. Yes. So, w what's your thinking about it? We talk uh, only about day limit, um, and uh, didn't introduce a week limit, but uh, we say that it's important that it's not every day uh, of the week. So that was our solution. Yes. Um, it seems to me that it is a mixture of a, a, a low risk advice and a high risk advice because, you know, the Danish high risk advice for women was two a day and three for men. And the low risk uh, advice is one for women and two for men. And, and you have somehow combined the low risk and the high risk in, in one message. Or, or do you agree about that? Um, yes, uh, we considered uh, our prior guidelines that were, uh, yeah, that were uh, um, two and three. And uh, we, know, we knew that one and two uh, is uh, the sure side of the communication, but we didn't want uh, uh, to uh, have uh, the risk uh, uh, of a lower acceptance. So we uh, went to uh, this uh, one, two, two, three, but in, in the consideration of, uh, of uh, low risk drinking. Uh, it's true that uh, the attempt of the RISICO 
uh, check tool uh, where we would have uh, like uh, to have uh, uh, low risk, uh, middle risk, risk, uh, high risk and all possible combinations and uh, e eventually uh, individual specific risk with an answer you have uh, that risk for uh, this disease, for this and this and this uh, has complicated this because uh, we, we, we would like to go on, the, on this direction. Mm. Uh, I have a question, but just to be sure that I understood, when you speak about chronic alcohol use, what you what do you uh, mean about this? You include even high risk or just alcohol dependent? No, it's the um, very, very true mm. definition of uh, mm. <coughs> the daily uh, consumption of uh, uh, three drinks uh, mm. uh, as chronic uh, alcohol uh, cons uh, con use, uh, and uh, in some times it's uh, it's used uh, for uh, research uh, in the in, uh, news on the media, uh, and so and I think that uh, brings us uh, also in difficult uh, in the communication uh, when we uh, talk about chronic uh, uh, alcoholism uh, uh, it's perceived so uh, with uh, two uh, with a three drinks uh, a day consumption every day yes it's in the every day yes Uh, it went by quite fast. Did, did you have something on young people? Yes. <laughs> and how did your thinking of young people relate to uh, what was said by Rebecca? Did it's not uh, much developed. Uh, we... We... Uh, Stay there on a communication uh, on the legal limit. Um, that's uh, surely a topic that we have uh, to do develop specifically. Uh, now it's it's the the legal limit with this problem that uh, well it's a little problem. It's uh, only one region, a little region that has another uh, legal limit age, uh, um, but uh, it's still a problem. Um, and we, you see, we stayed and this narrative advises and uh, so it's a, a topic that had, has to be developed uh, with uh, all new. Mariata. Thank you. But only in case there are no other comments because I would like to highlight that Switzerland is participating in this joint action at their own cost. The joint action is not only limited to European Union countries. We have Switzerland, Norway and Iceland who are participating um, as, um, as um, EU outsiders. And Switzerland in particular has been participating in work meetings and we have had the Swiss uh, Experts on the Delphi studies participating all at their own costs and, and also our guest speaker here today is uh, at own cost. So thank you for that. No more? There is time for more questions if you want.